Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome back to the television graveyard. We're your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noah Woolhan. We've come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, to find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which one should stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we will analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season or only one episode. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Houlihan. I'm TV's Noah Houlihan, and I'm not the killer. So, we're breaking some rules today, team. Yeah, so we're in a very interesting situation where, if you join our Patreon, you are well aware that we do a monthly bonus episode based off of suggestions and votes by our patrons, and we were at a hard and fast tie that we could not break. Between Nickelodeon giveaways and this episode, Killer Camp. And Killer Camp. So Killer Camp is a reality show that ran one season so far. They mm-hmm. are currently filming season two. Like literally uh, right now today. At this moment uh, on the CW. And we decided since they were both like at this tie that we should do both of them. But we don't really have time to do two bonus episodes and still hit our weekly goals here with this show. So one episode would be a crowdfund crypt bonus episode, and one would be a standard episode of Stay Doomed. And we had originally decided that the Nickelodeon episode would be the standard episode because those things no longer ran, and that this, because it had been confirmed for season two, would be the crowdfund crypt episode. Yes. However. However, after recording Nickelodeon giveaways... It definitely broke our format a lot. And I was like, this does not feel like an episode of Stay Doomed. And I feel like this is going to feel more like an episode of Stay Doomed. So how are we cheap justifying this? We, Yeah, please. Please explain how we are. So Killer Camp Season 1 was only a UK production. Uh, the seasons upcoming are going to be joint productions between the US and the UK. And to fit into U.S. broadcast standards, I think there's going to have to be substantial uh, revisions to the show's format. And that's how we're justifying this, by virtue of the game over rule. Because it's our rule anyway. Yeah. Also, we thought this would be fun to talk about because it's a really interesting show. Yeah, there's a lot more here, and this feels a lot more like a Stay Doomed episode. Yeah, so... Uh, If you liked our episodes on Who Done It, Escape the Night, uh, Murder in Small Town X, this is one you're going to have a good time with. So, so if you're really upset we're breaking any rules, uh, sorry. You can yell at us if you join our Patreon. Yeah. So uh, before we, we get to it, what, what we know that this show is continuing, but uh, a lot of lives were lost at Killer Camp. So let's start by pouring one out. Laura, what do you got there? Uh, in the first episode, there is a watermelon juice based challenge. So I made a watermelon themed drink. This is watermelon juice, uh, real watermelon and watermelon mint vodka blended together with a little bit of ice. And then I tried to get some like dark chocolate in there for seeds, but it's all at the bottom, uh, which is, I wanted to get that like sediment of, you know, they're in the, uh, the mud. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, there's a hilarious foam on the top. Yeah. It's, it's kind of layered. Yeah. The way this drink looks. How is it? Oh, it's great. All right, I'm going to try a little sip here. Yeah, I mean, it's watermelon. You got to get a good hold on those stemless wine glasses. They don't go gently into that good night. Yeah, that's, it's like eating a watermelon. Well, there is like... Actual watermelon in yeah, it. Yeah, there's about a half a cup of real watermelon in here. Mm. And I think a lot of it foamed up to the top. Yes, definitely. Foamy. Yeah, looks foamy. But delicious. Yours is... Fun looking. <sighs> yeah, I, I I think I really messed up. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see how we feel. <laughs> it looks. Re- the ingredients I chose apparently do not get along, and they're all trying to separate. But what I've done is I've have my mommy's PB and J. Uh, one of the characters' mommies is very important, and I thought, what's more camp like than having a good old PB and J for lunch? So I started with some ice. I threw in some almond milk because, you know, you usually have milk with a uh, uh, peanut butter sandwich. And uh, I went with some peanut butter uh, whiskey that Why we have. Why is it purple, Noah? 
because I also added some purple Kool-Aid, some grape Kool-Aid for the for the jelly. And then I tried to stir it. I don't, I don't, I don't know about this, gang. Here we go. It's delicious. Is it really? It's really good. <laughs> I, I, I just broke through the foam layer of my drink and mm. under the foam layer, it's so refreshing. Mind unbelievable. It's great. Oh my God, I'm going to... Here, Laura, Laura has the glass. <laughs> oh, it smells so great. It smells very purple. It is very purple. That's way better than it. I don't want any more. I, I actually really like it. You really mm. get, you get the peanut butter and you get the, like, it is a peanut butter it's and jelly It's a peanut butter cocktail. and jelly sandwich, yeah. Yeah. My God. <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, a part of me wants to, like, I think you would, like, if you blended that, like, if you froze it and then blended it. Yeah. How, like, good that would be. Yeah. So, wow, weirdly successful. Yes, uh, cheers. Yeah. Pinky. Successful cocktails mm. today. That doesn't really happen very often on Stay Doomed. No, they're usually passable. But they were actually very good this week. We had a lot of fun because we came up with a bunch of different ones for this. Yeah. Um, we're going to, I might pepper in cocktail, the also ran cocktails throughout the episode. Okay. Because we talk about a lot of them and I feel like they deserve yes. their due. Yes, indeed. So now let's talk about Killer Camp. So we open on a school bus full of young adults going to summer camp. And each yes. one gets like a still card with who they are. Yes. So we meet in this order. Carl the tough guy. Sean the beauty queen. Rob the film geek. Jax the joker. Holly the outsider. And then we see him. So let me explain this. Uh, first off. Uh, that little jingle is not from the show. That is from Samimation. Samination. Samination. Yeah. Samination. Samination. It's from Sam. Uh, basically, the killer in this, the person who is doing the actual murders, looks like the trapper from the video game Dead by Daylight. Which we kept yelling. So every time we saw him, we yelled, Here comes the trapper! And so this is... He's clearly our Jason Voorhees character. This is all we know about him yet. Is yes. that he is looks exactly like the Trapper from Dead by Daylight. And then we meet Warren, the gym bunny. Eleanor, the diva. Sam, the vegan. Yeah. Nuri, the music nerd. Rosie, the forensic scientist. Because, you know, that's a high school stereotype. Yeah, yeah. And Fergal, the nice guy. Yeah, I, I write down in my notes, oh, wow, everyone's an asshole. I put everyone is a high school stereotype, but looks 30. Yeah, I mean, no one is particularly given a title that's like, oh, that's a good person. Like, there's no, like, heart of gold in there. And also, everyone is doing something douchey in the sequence. They're, like, throwing paper airplanes or, like, showing off their bodies or something like that. So everyone kind of comes off as a douchebag. And Fergal, who is the nice guy, is done up, like, he reminds me of, have you ever seen Wet Hot American Summer? Of course. Uh, he remi- I, I can't remember the actor's name. Hold on. Michael Ian Black. No. Um, he reminds me of Josh Charles' character. And when you see him later in the uh, Wet Hot American Summer sequel series that actually takes place earlier, when he has like multiple popped collars sewn into yes. his shirt, that guy. Mm-hmm. I had to look him up by his character name in Dead Poets Society. I, I think he's only... I don't think he's in the film. I think he's an exclusive character to the TV show. Well, he reminds me of that guy. Gotcha. From the uh, sequel series. So even he's like the nice guy, but he's dressed in a way that just screams like D-bag. Yes. Uh, so, so they get to Camp Pleasant. They get to Camp Pleasant. And they have to take boats over to uh, meet our counselor, Bobby. Yes. And they all get into different boats. There's like a swan yeah. There's like a paddle boat. I think there was a canoe. And uh, they oddly all have to break up into pairs. And then someone gets left kind of like without a pair. And that's Fergal. Yes. Who is just kind of like. 
spinning in a circle. Yeah, he like can't get his paddle boat to shore and everybody makes it across. Except yes, for Fergal. Except for Fergal. And then Bobby's like, well, let's do a chant to encourage Fergal to make it across. Do you guys know the chant? What's the chant? Lazy little camper. Oh, wow. Lazy little camper. 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 And then we come He hits a remote and Fergal's boat explodes yes. with Fergal in it. Yes. Now, I want to point out Fergal's boat clearly is the rigged one because it's the one that can face away. Yeah, from the and then audience. you can't see the, <laughs> the human so on So you board. don't see the gore or yeah. anything. Um, don't get used to not seeing the gore. We don't see the yeah. gore this time. Mm -hmm. Probably because this one had to be rigged live for the benefit of the contestants. Yeah. This is the only murder the contestants see. True, very true. So, uh, what's important here is... And then Bobby, that looks like it really hurt! Yes. Uh, two important things that happen here is Eleanor is the only one that laughs. Yes. Everyone else is shocked. And I have the note, hey, touch my boobs. Because someone's like, my heart's beating so fast. And Sean makes Carl touch her chest. He's like, touch touch my chest. And she just grabs Carl's hand and puts it on her boob. And is like, L feel my heart beating. <laughs> yeah, I have that... Notice I knew exactly who it was because I yeah. had it in my notes too. And then the counselor drops on them that this isn't the summer camp reality show they signed up for. Yeah. This is killer camp. This is killer Because they did, camp. Uh, they did actually get cast in a summer camp reality show. That's so fun. And like the bus ride is like they knew they were each being given a breakfast clubby stereotype. Yeah. And... I think they thought it was going to be more like a high school, like, more high school breakfast clubby. Yes. Instead mm -hmm. of right at the 13th. -y. Yeah. So part of me was going, okay, what's going on? Because he says, one of you is the killer. And first of all, I was like, okay, but we saw the killer and we right. saw all of them. So it's more of one of those situations of the killer controls Bruce the handyman. Who is the trapper. Who is... Actually, deton who actually detonated the boat. Yes. He commands Bruce the Handyman, who we will be referring to as the Trapper throughout this podcast. Oh, yeah, we sure. Uh, to, to murder whoever the killer wills to be murdered. So they get to their cabin, and they're all sleeping in, like, one dorm cabin, which I want to point out. Because usually you don't have everyone sleeping in the same room in a lot of right. these shows. They're in the same house, but, like, in a rock of love... It's like there's four beds in this room and three beds in this room. It's also not split up by gender, which is usually the case in these shows. Mm -hmm. So everyone is sleeping in one dorm room. I might be sleeping in the room with the murderer in my bed with me. It's not very ethical. Rosie, the forensic scientist, <laughs> who I'm already kind of starting to like a lot. Yeah. Because she's the one who's just like, ah, well, shit. And... All of their portraits are on the wall, and Fergal's is X'd out in blood. In blood. And everyone's very upset. Right. Because Fergal was the nice guy, and everyone got along with him. Right. And then Rob is excited. He is, I have him as, he's a dweeb version of Skeet Ulrich from Scream. Yes. This will be important later. Yeah, like he's, and this is also kind of like quasi, he's Skeet Ulrich, but also Jamie Kennedy. Yes. From Scream. Because he's kind of like, he's like the film nerd. And so the new first game is I carried a watermelon, which is what this, because this mm. is the money challenge. Because how this game works is there are $15,000 in play. Yes. Which is actually 50000 for season two. Oh, okay. They've upped it by three and a half times roughly. So that, again, I think that's why we're going to get away with calling this a different show. Yeah. And they're tied together in the waist in pairs because now there's only 10 of them because Fergal is dead. And they have to get the watermelon juice up this muddy hill. Yes, this slippery muddy hill. Into a tank. And the more they can get, the bigger share of $3,000 because each of these five challenges is split. In There's going to be five episodes, five challenges, $3,000 per challenge. Right. So 
the more they can get the bigger hunk of this three thousand dollars is split among the innocent surviving campers. Yeah, as they call them, the innocents. Yeah, I think they actually don't say innocents until like the last episode. No, that's what pops up on screen. Oh, okay. It pops up as innocence. And then whatever they don't win, the killer gets. The killer will get. And then whoever wins the end of the show, whether it's the innocents or the killers, will win their stash of money. Yes. Now. It's very slidey. I have this question to start with. This is an English uh, reality show. Dollars? There's a few places where I think it's dubbed. Oh, you think it's dubbed here? In this episode, it seems dubbed. But there's a bunch of places where it doesn't seem quite as dubbed, and I'm wondering if... Because they, do they still use the pound over there, right? They do. They use pound sterling. So I'm not really sure. I, I kind of think it was dubbed in for... Because this aired originally October 2019 right. in the UK and was brought over here and ran in one week in July 2020... It, like, burned through in a week on the CW when they were peak, we have no content. Yeah. It's COVID. We can't film anything. We need to air something. Yeah. So they ran this for a week. Uh, because a lot of their shows ran short mm-hmm. on the CW because they had to be cut off almost at the end of their season. I remember Riverdale was one of the first shows to shut down and actually right. made the news for shutting down because they had a... a um, a crew member test positive like early on. Mm-hmm. So they shut down and they had to alter the fifth season drastically because of it. Right. And cut off the fourth season essentially two or three episodes before the climax. Right, right. So they burned through whatever summer content they already had. Mm-hmm. And nobody really wants to do reruns anymore. No, f- certainly not. Which I think is very interesting because usually like... In the past, in the summer breaks, you would thrive on reruns, but no one wants to do that. No. So they were actually importing this content. So they have to make it up this hill. My notes say that Jax is sus and Eleanor is sus because of the way that they are falling and spilling their watermelons. Yeah, because they suck. They do suck. Uh, Nuri and Rosie are a bit more successful, yeah. as are Warren and Sean. Yeah, I'm sus Jax because Jax like, falls immediately. Like, they step into the water and he falls over. And I was like, I think he's establishing himself as poorly athletic to kind of hide his susness. There's also a shot where, like, Rob is, like, almost visibly dragging Jax up the hill. Yes. And Rob is, like, Jax is a bigger guy. Mm -hmm. And Rob is a smaller gentleman. Yeah. So, like, he is trying to drag Jax up the hill. Yeah. It's not going great. No. In the end, the innocents make eleven hundred and fifty dollars out of the available three thousand, and the killer gets eighteen fifty. So, yeah. bad showing. Yeah, uh, Bobby is our camp counselor is very upset by this, and we are led to believe how much of it is innocent mistakes versus how much of it was sabotage. Right, and we see I keep I call this set the dweeb tent. Because for the first few episodes, we only see the characters who are stereotyped as being nerds. Mm-hmm. And my next note is, production did not spring for bug spray. No. It is, they filmed in Lithuania during summer 2019. Yeah. And it is definitely summer. It's buggy. It's not pretend summer where everyone's actually freezing. Right. It is summer. hmm Everyone gets kind of gross. Uh, I have a note here that this happens throughout. Uh, whenever they're kind of lounging about, like, just having conversations, uh, they're often wearing the same shirt to make it, because it's camp, which makes sense. Yeah. They're all in the Camp Pleasant shirt. But it's hard for me as a first-time viewer to be like, who are these people? They're all in the same yellow shirt, or they're all in the same green shirt. I have this problem specifically with uh, Sean and Rosie, because they both had blonde ponytails. Yes, uh, everyone else you could kind of figure out. And I actually had this problem with the Warren, Carl, Sam group. Yeah. Because all three of them were bigger guys with tattoos. Yeah. So it was hard to figure them out in the first episode. Yes. To me. Agreed. Um, most of the, If you were different looking in any way, it was a little easier. Yeah. So Sam, Holly, Rob, and Jax are discussing that they suspect Eleanor 
because she was so prissy about the challenge and she laughed when Fergal died. Yeah. And we also then see Nuri, Carl, Sean, and Rosie. And Sean is a flirt. And we all, we, we're starting to see the budding of a flirtation between Carl and Sean. Yes. Um, Sean, I want to point out because uh, Sean is like uh, Irish, I believe. So she has like a very distinct accent compared to the others. And that's actually how I start to parse her out from Rosie at this it point. Makes sense. And they also think uh, it's Eleanor. And then I have the note of, wait, is Eleanor the only black camper? Damn it, reality shows. Yeah, yeah. Because it kind of looks like they're building her as either the first one to be... Because sus- I don't know how the game works at this point. And I think I'm like, is she going to be the first one voted off? Yeah, to be honest, we don't really know how the game works. Really until the show is over. Yeah. Because <laughs> every time we think we know how the show works, something changes. Yes. And the counselor summons all of the campers to the cabana. They are going to get the clue challenge because we already had the money challenge and now we're getting the clue challenge. Yes. And you get five unique clues to the killer's identity. Yeah. They're, they're split up supposedly randomly into two teams. Yes. And they have to stack logs on top of each other. And whoever has the tallest tower when time runs out will win these clues. However, uh, there's one person on each team that has the power to shock the other team. Yeah, each of them has like a TENS unit on their arm. And, you know, at the right time, if you can shock them, they might fall into their tower. Now, Bobby makes a reference here of like, we are playing this game because it is raining. And I wondered how true that was. I don't know. I didn't find anything in my exact research about that game. Mm -hmm. I did find some interesting things later. But I didn't get a lot of the, like, day-to-day stuff. I wish you'd mentioned that question before now. I, I'm sorry. I just saw it in my uh, notes. Because I was trying to, like, get in touch with some of the cast members. And there might be a follow-up episode at some point. Yeah. But uh, they... I haven't heard back from anyone yet. Okay. Um, the, he also... He actually wonders aloud... It's not, he doesn't say because it's raining. He asks out loud... No, sorry, my next note kind of answers you. Okay, excellent. He asks out loud, should we be playing this game in the rain? <laughs> so no, that was clearly the plan. It's more of they're going like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's interesting because I never considered rain being a factor on a reality show. Because I've seen it rain in Survivor. Yes. I've never seen it rain on Big Brother. No. And there's there's part of it that's outside. And, like, I can't think of any, like, particular mole challenges or stuff. This this game, by the way, very similar to the mole in that you have a person who's sabotaging and actively trying to stop the team from winning money, which I kind of dug. Well, and a lot of those shows film in California, which just has fewer rainy days. True, true. So, statistically, California summer, you're not getting that kind of rain. Right. I'm sure if we were watching, like, Florabama Shore... <laughs> Where certain times of the year it rains it every just day. It rains, yeah. I mean, I'm sure in Jersey Shore there's rainy days, but I think this might be just uh, this is filmed in Lithuania. Yeah. So I have a note that you would kill Counselor Bobby for his job, given one quarter of the chance. I would. I would love to be Bobby. That that is a dream host gig right there. And he, I don't actually have what his joke was, but he makes a very blue joke on on screen. Because this is a UK show, so there's like some things he says that it didn't get cut from the CW cut, but it's the kind of joke that probably wouldn't have been made. Yeah, I'll try to find it. Um, The pink team wins, which is Carl, Rob. Rob was at the switch shopping people, and he was very good at it. Like Rob is very surgical in knowing the exact moment to shock someone. It's also Sam, the vegan... Warren the gym bunny, and Eleanor, who everyone thinks is sus. Mm. Now, Bobby makes a note that uh, basically they're each going to be given a clue in private. Mm -hmm. And then you can reconvene and decide whether to share it or whether to keep it to yourself. However, if the killer won a clue, they will lie about it. They can lie about it. They don't have to lie about it, but they're likely to lie about yeah. it. Yeah. 
So, and each person gets assigned a clue. It's not like... It's not like you pick them out of a fishbowl or something. Yeah, like you come in and Eleanor comes in and there's an envelope that says Eleanor. Yes. So Eleanor giggles when she gets her cue. Mm -hmm. Warren does a full um, Jim Halpert to camera. Mm -hmm. Um, And then like... Carl and War- Carl and uh, Sam don't really have visible reactions, and then uh, Rob goes, "Huh," and then that's it. Yes. Uh, our clues that they then discuss are: uh, the killer used to collect stamps. Mm-hmm. Uh, the killer's favorite subject in school was art, which is Eleanor's clue. Uh, the killer. Guilty pleasure is Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Uh, the killer's favorite food is Thai food. Mm-hmm. Which is Rob's clue. And uh, the killer loves Danny DeVito. Yes. So they're all very, like, this is a very interesting way to go about the clues. I was expecting more of it to be like, the clue was on, or like, the killer raised X amount of money in the games. Not just something that, like... You could ask them, like, hey, your thoughts on Danny DeVito? Yeah. And they all choose to share the clues with the group. Yes. We're going to talk about this mechanic later. Yeah. Um, and how I think this game is going to be changed permanently in yes. season two. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so then we get this little scene of uh, Bobby in, like, the camp counselor office. Yeah, he's calling them to the immunity challenge over yes. the loudspeaker. And then he turns to a photo and says, They're a really good group, Mommy. Do we have to hurt them? This is vital to me. Yeah. Because, net, like, this is world building. Like, this is the thing that separates it from just being a reality show to being an alternate reality show. Where, like, there's a lore here that we don't know that we're getting pieces of. I mean... Love that. And it also explains Bobby and anything moving forward with Bobby and Bruce the Handyman. Because you know who, um, what this is a real spiritual successor to? The whodunit lore. Yeah. Because in the whodunit lore, if you read the novel, what happens is the curse follows Giles. Okay. So wherever Giles goes, this murder curse follows. Okay. And I think they're also doing that with Bobby here. Of Bobby is Bobby and his mother are the root of the murder curse. Anyway, this is a bumper. Everybody gets one of those Wade the Duck style <laughs> um, floaty tubes that goes around your waist that has an animal on it. Yes, we got some turtles. We got a, a pterodactyl. We got a duck. We got a unicorn. It's great. Yeah, they're all different, and it's a bumper challenge, but you must use your floaty. You cannot punch or kick, Mm. because Bobby the Counselor is already smarter than Luke Tipple. Yeah! I actually have, like, oh, they learn from opposite worlds. Yeah. Um, And they're on these, like, floating platforms. And they have to get knocked off. Yeah. So you're, you're kind of like hopping around these like wooden lily pads, trying to play bumper cars with your tubes. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time where all the girls' butts are blurred because they're in a bathing suit? Uh, not all. Just Holly. Is it just Holly? Yeah, for some reason, like, just Holly. Oh. And I think it might be, like, I think Holly swims into lighter color. So oh, I'm wondering maybe. if it's, like, less coverage. Uh... Holly tweeted her amusement at finding out that her butt was censored in the American cut. Really? Because it's not censored in the British cut. Of course not, yeah. So she thought it was hilarious. That's funny. So Eleanor falls in immediately because she's sus. Yeah. Uh, Holly falls in but puts up a fight. Rob is thrown in. And then it's Warren versus Carl. Mm -hmm. And Warren very wisely takes the lower center of gravity and beats Carl that way. Yes. And then we get group two, because it's kind of this, like, the, It's series. in heat, yeah. Yeah. And it's Rosie and Jax, and they have a hard time because, like, Rosie has short legs and can't jump. Right. Sean, when Nuri and Sean fight, Sean gets hurt. 
Yes, Sean doesn't quite make a jump and basically skins her shin against the corner of one of these lily pads. Yeah. And it's really interesting how people reacted in this show because I think of like an American reality show where people are trying to win a million dollars. These are clearly British actors who are trying to get on television. Yeah. So someone starts bleeding and they're like, there's blood. It's gross. My, look where my hands are. My hands are up. I'm not touching it. It's blood. I don't want to deal with this. I mean, they're fighting for a share of $15,000. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not worth getting hurt for. And Sean's like, I'm bleeding, so I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got an owie. Um, Sam versus Nuri. At one point, Nuri has Sam in a headlock. Yes. But Sam does ultimately beat her. Right. And then Sam versus Warren. And Warren wins because he's pretty, like, bold. He kind of slides and gets, uh, like, gets Sam's feet out from under him. Yeah. Rob is very angry and very turned on. (laughs) That's his talking head. I don't know why I felt the need. Uh... It, this is interesting because I don't I don't like this game. No. Just because, like, I noticed that some of the intertubes were better at this than others. The duck is The much duck better. was much better. The mighty turtle is what wins. Uh, but, like, the duck, because it was a big uh, inflatable head, like, round, it, it offered more of, like, a boosting power. Yeah. As opposed to the flamingo. Which is a long necked, like floppy thing that wouldn't do anything. But you can tell from the reactions that, like, everyone's just kind of having fun. Like, there's no one that's like, I need to win immunity. Everyone's like, ah, whatever, I fell in the lake. (laughs) Which is cool to see. Like, it's kind of cool to see that on TV every now and again, where it's not a bunch of people backstabbing each other and, like, Playing super strategically. I am here to make friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to make friends. Um, and we find out that uh, Bobby informs Warren, who is one, that Warren may choose someone to also share immunity. Yes. And you get the immunity woggle, which is how I learned what those like weird ties are that Boy Scouts have. Yes, they're woggles. So... Uh, Warren selects Carl, which was foreshadowed by Warren mentioning that he and Carl had a bit of a bromance. Yeah, they're romantic. And so then we go back to the cabin and, uh, I love this because it's the most British thing I've ever seen in my life. It's Rob and Eleanor and they're complaining that the tea is unlabeled. Yeah. So they're like trying to figure out what kind of tea Rob just made. <laughs> Which is so British. Yeah. It's lemon. Turns out it's lemon tea. (laughs) And Rob points out to Eleanor, like, uh, everyone noticed your nervous laugh. Yeah. And Eleanor goes, everyone is my enemy except for Rob. Right. He's safe. Which is very, like, good editing of, like, they're making Eleanor look as suspicious as they can. Yes. And then Bobby calls them to the campfire. Come on to the campfire. I hope you made your peace with God. <laughs> Bobby's so good. And uh, so then they have the campfire and they always have like an awkward little conversation. This reminds me of Moola Beach, yeah. actually. Uh, similar, like they let them all become friends too quickly. And so then they kind of have to like draw awkwardness out of them. Yeah. So they all agree with Nuri coming out of her shell. Nuri talks about how she doesn't want to die, but she also doesn't want anyone to leave. Yeah, you... you- Nuri needs to come out of her shell in that you may notice that this is our first time mentioning her. Oh, I mentioned that she had someone in a headlock earlier. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, And then they talk about how Jax the Joker has been quiet. Like, Jax being the Joker is a very informed trait in this Mm -hmm. show. He's the one who really doesn't, like, line up at all because we don't really see him be funny. Yeah. It kind of feels stereotypical that he was, like, the bigger guy. Mm -hmm. So he gets labeled as the Joker. And Jax kind of calls out Eleanor. And then the killer has selected two campers to go on a night excursion, which is very murder in small town X. Yes. One will come back and one uh, won't. Mm -hmm. And 
Eleanor and Nuri have been selected. Yes, for a segue tour of the, the camp. The two women of color have been selected. Yes. Because Nuri is Asian and Eleanor is black. Mm. So cool. Cool, cool, cool. Stereotypes. And by stereotypes, I mean that a person of color always dies first. In a, I guess in a horror movie. I guess that's why they killed Fergal off, so that they could actually yeah. control who dies first. Uh, so while they're gone... They're on a moonlit Segway tour. Yeah. Which Bobby suddenly goes... We can't have a campfire without a scary story, right? Yeah, let's hear it. Scariest one you got. Oh, I've got one for you. (laughs) Once upon a time, two British campers named Nuri and Eleanor went for a walk through a wood at night. And this is a great way to do an elimination. Yeah. I love that it's set up as Bobby telling a campfire story and also kind of creates this like, how does Bobby know this? Yeah. Love it. Uh, and he, always, he also tells all of them, the very beginning of it is very pastoral. Mm-hmm. They're hugging and they're smiling and they're having a wonderful time on their moonlit Segway tour. But then... The trapper hangs uh, barbed wire. Razor wire. Razor wire, excuse me, at neck level. Yeah. Uh, and the person who is on the Segway, who they do a good job of like keeping blurry so you don't know. Yeah. Couldn't see it. Eyes open wide. They tried to scream, but they couldn't because the razor wire had cut <gasps> through their vocal cord and sliced their head clean off. Shwick! And the head hit the ground. Blood started from their neck hole. It completely decapitates her. Yeah. Her because the Segway is still moving. <laughs> the Segway doesn't stop. Yes, and we, it reveals that it's Nuri. And she dies hilariously inexpensively. The yeah. Big old prop head goes flying. <laughs> it is exquisite in its campiness. Blood is shooting out her neck. And Bobby goes, And as for their torso, on the Segway, well... Legend has it that it just kept driving for 26.2 miles. That's right. It ran a marathon. And we do see the shot of the, it's like the headless horseman, but a segue. Yes. So, and then I turned to Lara and I went, oh no, she got Heather duked. Yeah, and then I, like, had a horrible flashback because I've actually finally stopped having nightmares about Heather, so thanks for that. Um, I, I believe Heather's is the only show I've had nightmares about. Yeah, I can't say that I've ever had a dream about any of the shows. I've honest. had dreams about other shows. Heather's is the only one I've had nightmares about. Yeah. The other ones were fun. Uh, I had a dream about Rock of Love last night that I was a story producer, and so I was just making life hard for everybody. No oh, fun. Um, and then Eleanor comes back, and Sam is super upset. He's everyone's very upset that Nuri didn't come back because everybody liked Nuri more than they liked Ele- Eleanor. Mm-hmm. And we see a shot of Eleanor in what is the confessional area, which is like looks like a camp office. And then she vanishes out of shot, and there's one clue on the table. Marked Bruce. Yeah, that was weird. Which I saw quickly, and you actually went like good eye. Yeah. Because you didn't catch it. So I did log our picks. Yes. My pick at this point is Eleanor, Mm -hmm. because they're making her so obvious. And this seems so invested in the tropes that they're making her obvious so that they can discount her so that it can actually be her the whole time. Yeah. Like, I feel like they're trying to broadcast that it's her, so she'll be absolved in two or three episodes, and then the fifth one she'll be like, it's me, I'm the trapper. Yeah. Now, and if memory serves, I was on the Eleanor train, but then I believe I switched to Holly. You do choose Holly. I choose Holly because I was like, oh, she's the outsider. Maybe that's the whole bit of this, is that she's the outsider here. And we saw Holly do very little. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't see much of Holly in this episode. What do you think of this elimination mechanic? 
Um, so I do know how they they are chosen. Okay. Um, the killer does choose the eliminated camper. Okay. The producers choose the other. Okay. Uh, the producers choose the other character or the other character, the other camper who goes on the moonlight walk or something for who's going to make the best TV. That makes sense. So the eliminated character is decided by the killer. Okay. So elimination basically works the way it would in a game of werewolf. Yes. Where the werewolf just is like, I choose this person to die. Yeah. They're done. Uh, there is an issue of this that, like, why was Neri eliminated? Because she couldn't bump somebody off with her flamingo? Like, there, it, it's kind of okay in that there is an, elim- a, an immunity challenge. So, like, there is a way to save yourself. Yeah. But th- it felt so random in this that, like, the, the killer's whim was for... It to be Nuri. And this early in the game, it was not like, well, was Nuri, like, on to the killer? Like, I don't know enough about, hmm. Yeah, I, I feel that with Nuri's death in, in particular of, and out of them, Nuri is the only one that doesn't feel like it makes any sense. Yeah. Um, and we actually just, when the killer does discuss why Nuri was killed... It's not, it's still not really that good of a motive. Yeah. So we are in episode two. We establish that Fergal and Nuri have died and everyone is sleeping and Rosie establishes that he didn't sleep well or she didn't sleep well. Uh, Rob is kind of discomfited because he slept next to Nuri's empty bed, Mm -hmm. which has no pillow on it because Eleanor took her pillow. Took her pillow as a prize. And uh, I actually have the realization that the bus ride mechanic was clever, having them all bus in together. Yeah. And it gives all of them time to get to know each other so that they are still grieving the people who are eliminated first in a way that most shows do not do. Right. Like if you're watching like a Rock of Love or even a Whodunit, which I think Mm -hmm. is more, is closer. The person who's killed first in Whodunit, nobody really knows her. Right. And so it's not really, like, emotional to anybody. Nobody really cares. This, it's like you spent a few hours with these people and you were friendly with them. Right. Now, I will say, Fergal worked in casting for the show. Okay, okay. So Fergal was a plant. Right. Uh, He was cast to be killed immediately, which I think is important to note because it's not unfair. Yeah, there's not just some poor guy that doesn't get his share of the... Yeah, and I believe they actually paid the first woman who dies on Whodunit as well. Like, she doesn't get nearly as much as, like, the prize. But, like, the killer in Whodunit, she got something for volunteering to be that first person. Right. So, uh, I kind of just had that note. And I had a note here of the last person we see in the intro was Nuri. Right. And I I wanted to write that down because I was like, oh, does it, is this Escape the Night? Because the first, because the first um, season of Escape the Night, kind of telegraphs who dies, and how. Right, right. Uh, no, it doesn't. No. I looked at other episodes. It does not. not the case. It's not the Death Order. Uh, Rob is upset because Fergal and Nuri were his only friends. Yeah. So he has now lost the entire group of people he was close to. Yeah, he's the only nerd left. Outside of arguably Eleanor. Yeah. Carl is simultaneously feeling like he's in Warren's debt for choosing him for immunity, but he also kind of doesn't believe Warren really cares about him. And so everyone's kind of just talking about uh, who they think is the killer. Some people suspect Rob. Some people suspect Eleanor. And we see Bruce in his little Bruce cabin grab his head, scream, and grab a pickaxe. Yes. Which, like, him having his little cabin is very Jason Voorhees. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cash activity. Yes, so the cash activity is a all very tied up. a very camp game. It's the human knot. Yes. Where they're all attached to this rope that is wrapped around these wooden 
pylons that are in this muddy water. Yes. And they all have to untangle themselves and then get across the finish line. And for each person that gets across the finish line, I believe it's $250. Except for one person is $500 because Sean has to sit out. Yes. Because this is in the like gross muddy lake. Mm-hmm. And Sean still has a big gash on her leg. She still has an open wound. So luckily, she's the cheerleader. So she's just like dressed as a cheerleader. Yeah. And she chooses Carl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's another thing is during the campfire sequences, everyone's back in their breakfast club outfits. Yeah, that's true. They're not dressed as campers. They're dressed in their like stereotype uniforms. Right. And we see Holly, Carl, and Jax really committing. Yeah. Like, Holly is going under the water. She's gross. Um, Rosie's not doing super well, and well, Rob is bone dry. Yeah, Rob is bone dry, but I noticed that Rosie goes under a pylon, and it actually wraps the rope around it more. And then I go, ah, it's Rosie. And yeah. I will be pretty sure it's Rosie for the rest of this show. Now, Jack's Carl at... Uh, Jax and Carl make it out. And so does Warren. Yes. Holly and Sam almost make it out. Yeah, but the finish line is up a slight... Muddy hill again. Yeah, incline that's real muddy, and they just don't make it. Yeah. And Bobby, Bobby's a little mean here. He's like, no, stop, you lost. Yeah, like like they want to slide back in the water. Yeah. Like, no, they still want to get out, Bobby. Yeah, stop trying. Eleanor, Rosie, and Rob don't make it out at all. They only get $1,000. Fortunately, Carl was the high value person. So they do get $1,000 because Carl, Jackson, Warren all yeah. make that money. Uh, Bobby calls out Rob for sucking at the challenge. Like, Bobby goes like, you really suck at this. Yeah. And my next note is Noah thinks it's Rosie. Yes, I do. And we're back to the dweeb tent. Yes. Because when we have the, like, discussions, there's really three settings. There's the patio of the cabin, the dorm area of the cabin, and the dweeb tent. Yeah, there's a, well, there's also, like, the dock. Yeah. They hang out at the dock sometimes. Yeah, I think the... Yeah. Carl and Sean are on the dock, giggling. Yes. Because Carl admits to Sean he likes her. Yeah, they like each other. They're giving each other, like, girly eyes and, and flies in there. And Eleanor eyelashes. and Rob are confiding in each other. Jax and Sam show up, and Sam sympathizes with Eleanor. And then we get just a scene with Warren and Holly, just awkward at the yeah. cabin. Like, they're not... They clearly need to show what they're doing at that time, mm-hmm. but they don't know what to do with them. Yeah, just remind us that they exist. Sam goes to Sean and Carl because Sam is close to the two of them and says, like, Eleanor feels like she's being ganged up on. Right. And then uh, Carl admits that he thinks it's Eleanor. So then we're getting to the clue challenge. Yes. And it's stand-up paddleboard hockey. Yes, that's right. They're they're again split up into teams and they have to play stand up paddleboard hockey. Uh, Sean doesn't play again, does she? Uh, n- she backs the pink team. She backs the pink team. Uh, so this leads to a problem that we will get into, I think, later. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just I'll just leave it there for now. Uh, but they basically they play some paddleboard hockey and it's it's a. It's less of a sport and more of a clip show of people falling off of paddle boards. But mostly jacks. But mostly jacks. There's the jocks and the jacks. And the jacks. Uh, And uh, they quickly realize that trying to play this like it's a team sport is futile. So anytime anyone gets the ball, they just try to throw it in the net, regardless of where they are. (laughs) Yes. Uh, And uh, the pink team takes this one, I believe. Uh, no, the blue team wins. The blue team. That's the opposite of what I just yeah, said. Yeah, which, despite Jax. Despite Jax, they're able to do it. And Rosie screams about wanting Warren dead. Um, and everyone's like, whoa, yeah. chill. Uh, everybody kind of hits Warren with a stick at one point, too. Uh, I have a note. Everyone laughs at the clues when they get them. And Holly's swimsuit is so small, it gets blurred on the CW. The show that brought you... The network that brought you Riverdale. Yes. Here are your next batch of clues, gang. Uh, the killer has had sex on a balcony. The 
Killer considers themselves a 5 out of 10. The killer likes to talk over people. The killer thinks that's their worst quality. Oh, worst quality is that they talk over people. And the killer is into taxidermy. He used to. Yeah, or she, she used, to. used to. Yeah, we don't know. They used to. Uh, so, very interesting. It's My favorite part is they're like, the killer has had sex on the balcony. And Sam immediately Sam's goes, like, yeah, I've done that. It's I've great. done that. It's great. It's awesome. You're on a balcony and you're having sex. It's great. <laughs> And nobody wants it to be Sam. Yeah. But they're all starting to suspect him. Yeah. And uh, they start to debate whether the taxidermy would work with him being vegan. Yes. Uh, but the clue did say, used to do. Yes. Jax has this whole, like, idea that maybe that's what made him a vegan, is dealing with the taxidermy. And since he's also covered in tattoos, that's where the art comes in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's a rocker. Thus, I bet he secretly loves Avril Lavigne. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Warren argues that they should change the clues and lie to the pink team. And... That makes him super sus. And Holly does not think that. Then we get a super cut of Carl, Warren, and Sam working out. Yes. Using and, Rob as a wig. And they bench Rob. <laughs> And Rob gives them his clue honestly. Because that's the sex in the balcony clue. Right. And that's when Sam's like, yo, I did that. I did that. It was awesome. Holly tells Eleanor the real clue and also sells out that Warren wanted to lie. Yes. Um, Carl and Warren bicker over the relationship with Sean. (laughs) Because Warren is also friendly with Sean. Right. And Warren almost quotes Jeff Winger. From Community. He almost yells, it's called chemistry, I have it with everyone. Yeah. Uh, And then we get the immunity battle. And this is an interesting one. This is an axe to grind. Yes. You grab an axe and throw it at the person who you feel shouldn't win immunity. Yeah. So there's no way to protect yourself. Yeah. There's only um, screwing someone else. Yeah, this is a big, this is a very common uh, survivor challenge. Where, like, you slowly eliminate people, but in eliminating someone, you're making yourself a target because you're showing your intentions and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, But usually in Survivor, it's about answering trivia questions. In this one, it's how well you can throw an axe. Yes. Uh, Because you do have to connect with the axe for it to count. Yeah, it's got to stick in there. So, Jax chooses Eleanor. And, good aim... Yeah. Right in the center of her picture. Eleanor yeah. cannot win immunity. Uh, Carl chooses Warren and nails that one. And Warren screams, what's tactical about betrayal, bro? Yeah, it, we're in a bromance. Warren picks Carl and misses. Uh, Sam chooses Jax because he thinks Jax is the safest. But he doesn't get it. Or no, he does get it, rather. Um... Then Sean misses, Rob misses, but Jax takes out Sam. Right. Uh, Rob finally gets Sean, because a couple people have tried to get Sean at this point. Yeah. Uh, Warren nails Carl, and that we're down to Holly and Rosie. Now, I just, I want to say this, because nobody brings this up. Mm Mm-hmm. In this situation, who are you trying to eliminate? Like... What is their strategic move here? Like, yes, you want to win. But but even if, like, you can't do the thing where you're like, I'm going to eliminate the person who's the best at throwing axes. Because they still get to throw an axe even when they're eliminated. Right. So, you guys as a team should be like, well, who wins us the most money? Yeah. Let's keep them. But nobody has this thought. No, there's There's no... There's this just vague, like... I, for no reason, think this person doesn't need immunity because I don't think the killer, who I don't know who they are, would kill them. Like, think for a moment. So then what happens is Carl... uh, Carl still gets to throw an axe, and he's got the last one. And he looks at Holly and Rosie and says, "Uh, I will pick whoever will pick Sean as their partner to get immunity. Yeah. And Rosie immediately was like, me, me, I will choose Sean. Yes, I'll make an immunity pack, which is 
uh, a phrase that they're trying to like pigeonhole into the show. Yeah. It's kind of like their version of Alliance. Yes. It's immunity pack. And then Carl handily eliminates Holly and Rosie announces, okay, I want to be known for being good on my word. So yes. I will choose Sean to be my immunity buddy. And then I have a note that Rosie's eyelashes are about to fall off. <laughs> She's like big fake eyelashes. Yes. They're not holding up well in the camp. Uh, I have that you scream that you would kill Carl or Warren because you would want more money as the killer and Carl and Warren are the best at the challenge. And stuff. Yes! That's why they need immunity. I, like, But I had that note that you must have screamed that while we were watching it. Similar to what I'm doing now, I'm equally as upset now as I was then. Sean and Carl continue to flirt and Sean is very reticent. Like Carl is like, I really like you. And Sean's like, yeah. Yeah, my love you. Uh, Carl discusses that he trusts Sam, but not Warren. And Sean just kind of is like, oh, I'm going to leave you guys to have your boy talk. And Sean leaves. Mm -hmm. Rosie talks about having nightmares. She jokingly threatens Jax. Again, she jokingly threatens another character. Yeah. They're all talking in the cabin. And... The, tra- the trapper comes out of nowhere. He just, just kinda... launches himself at the window, yeah. scares the shit out of him. And everybody. then pieces out. Yeah. Uh, Which is clearly like a tactic of like, hey, you're not safe. Uh, we kind of skipped over the Warren Carl bro talk. Yeah. And apparently Carl felt betrayed by Warren because he thought Warren was trying to, and I quote, snake his girl. Yeah. Uh, well, I said the, I have, it's called chemistry. I have it with everyone. Right. But I just want to point out that Carl is threatened by Warren Mm -hmm. because he thinks Warren is trying to snake away Sean, who he's known for a day and a half. Correct. (laughs) So uh, they wear their breakfast club uniforms in the campfire. My next note is, how does Bobby figure in? And Warren and Carl are summoned out for the Moonlit Walk. Sean breaks down a little bit. Yes. Because Sean feels responsible for Carl being called out. Yeah. And Bobby says what we're all thinking. You've built up quite the relationship in only two days. Yes. Uh, And they're going to go on a stunning Moonlit Walk. Yeah, so it's Carl and Warren, which is what I called. I was like, I bet it's going to be Carl and Warren. I mean, knowing how the eliminations work... If the killer cho- chose one of them, the producers were sure as hell going to yeah. pick the other. Yeah. They have to go... And Sean cries through Bobby's entire story. Yes. We got to talk about that. Yeah. T- t- what, I don't remember what happens. Can you please explain in immense detail what Bobby's story is for this episode? War, um, one of the campers comes to the clearing with a statue of a Greek god. And the statue is beautiful. And there's a plaque at the bottom of the statue, covered over an ivy. He moves, stares at the statue and moves closer and brushes the ivy off the plaque. Phallus and palace. And I scream, no way they're not going to do this, are they? And I go, <laughs> And uh, the detonator is pulled. We see the trapper's hand with the detonator. Yes. Um... As, and then Bobby hams it up. Yeah, Warren is the one staring yeah. at the statue. And I'm, I'm telling you what we see in the American cut, and then we'll talk about what we see in the okay. UK cut. Bobby freaks out and screams and goes, hey, He's dead! He's dead! Dead, dead, dead! Yeah, he says a piece of it flies off. Yes. Uh, in the UK cut, it is indisputably the penis. Yes. Well, I mean, Bobby and actually the, the says... Penis. He was in awe of the beauty and grace of the statue. But most of all, it's big fucking dick. It's his huge cock. <laughs> it's just it's his huge cock. And it flies off and impales Warren through the eye. We also don't see in this episode where Warren is stabbed. No. We see it blurred out in later episodes. It, it, you see the back of his head blurred out mm-hmm. and like you could kind of even argue that it's too gory, not because it is human genitalia. <laughs> I mean, 
I'm just thinking of like what they've gotten away with showing on Riverdale. I know. I'm more of saying that like you could watch this and not realize that he's been impaled with a dick. Oh, you absolutely could. Yeah. Uh, But you can find it online. Yeah. Um, And it's like very clearly just a stone dick through this man's head. And it's so funny. And there was blood everywhere. I mean everywhere. On the ground, on the trees, on the statue. And he was dead. He was dead. I want this man's job so bad. Uh, Eleanor is crying and Sam is consoling her. And then when Carl comes back, Sean goes and jumps on him with her legs around his waist. And she's crying in the confessional and she's wearing his jacket. Yeah. And then Carl tries to kiss her. Yeah. But instead of a big movie kiss, she moves her head and he gets like a face full of mucus. He swallows her nose. Oh, it's so bad. (laughs) She's been crying. So she's like. (laughs) And then as Bobby puts it, it's another new pillow for Eleanor. (laughs) You didn't sell it as well as he does. She's like, you guys know what this means? Another new pillow for Eleanor. And um, I, Bobby is the best. Bobby's amazing. I, we're gonna get to episode three in a second, but I want to point out that episode three starts with Rosie taking Warren's pillow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like so, taking the pillow is a huge thing. Yeah. So, who do you think it is at this point? At this point, I have pretty much all my eggs in Rosie because I felt like I fall into the trap really hard for this show where I'm paying attention to tropes more than clues. Yes. And I'm like, they are spending so much time trying to get us to look elsewhere. What are the small things that we're missing? And as soon as I saw her wrap her own rope around a pylon, I'm like, it's Rosie. That's why they made sure to show that shot. I don't, I don't think it's Sam. Uh, I don't think it's Eleanor anymore. Uh, I'm just like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's Rosie. Where and are you? I think it's Sean. Yes. Because her leg injury is not that bad. Yeah. She like scraped her leg and I'm like, oh, what better way to not be responsible and look blameless than being like, my leggy hurts. Yeah. And she's not very, she's not very into the relationship with Carl. Right. But also, sending Carl and having him come back kind of exonerates her. Yes. So I'm looking at it, thinking of motives and clues. I'm thinking it's Sean right now. Because, Mm -hmm. like, sending Carl makes Sean look innocent, even though Sean has lost nothing. Right. Even though we now, uh, through research, I know the producer sent Carl. Right, right. Uh, But in the kayfabe, Sean still sent Carl. Not Sean. The killer still sent Carl out. Right. In my theory, it was Sean. So episode three. Uh, We see the cabin in night vision. And the trapper, instead of coming like against the window like we see him do before, he just walks into the door. He's just inside. I was like, oh my God, what does this mean? And then they show like the intro and... No, nothing, nothing. And then we just see the next happened. morning. Nothing happened. Yeah. Like, almost like the killer forgot, like, their contact lenses. Mm-hmm. And it's like the trapper is mommy coming to drop them off. And it's like, you, you left us at home. You forgot your lunch. Yeah, I didn't want your phone to die. Um, die. Get it in the trapper. <laughs> um... So the next morning, everyone's pretty unhappy about the situation. And Eleanor, in a great line reading, goes, I pooped my pants. (laughs) Like, cheerfully announces that I pooped my pants. So it's Eleanor, Holly, and Jax. And they're kind of suspecting Rob and Sam at this point. And Holly's like, but I like everybody. Yes. Uh, And we see, as they're getting ready for the the, uh, money challenge, Bruce the Handyman just lurking around the camp. Yes. And I have been broken down by Escape the Night. So I think, like, we're going to get a weird off-formula murder at some point. This has never happened. And it's something that so many of the shows have promised us. There's never a time where someone just dies in Escape the Night. There's never a time in Murder in a Small Town X 
where someone is alone and gets killed, despite the fact that that is threatened in every episode of Murder in a Small Town X, it never happens. Escape the Night sort of does it by doing killing not people you would expect. Because I would say a big, when I keep saying that, I keep thinking of Sophia's death in season three. Yeah. Of, like, she wasn't sent out into. Yeah. And then then the killer just rolls up and murders. Yeah. She kind of comes in and stabs her. Yeah. Poor Sophia. I'm legitimately still angry about that one. I agree. Because Sophia is actually one of the few people from Escape the Night that, like, I started watching their YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I love Sophia. Yeah. So I'm still mad. Yeah. Well, let's finish this episode so we can watch her wear the weird. Oh, yeah. We haven't watched the weird shoes one yet. This one's called Playing with the Boys. Boys like yes. boobies. This is the next money challenge. Yes. And Bobby talks about how... My mommy, who is a famous camp counselor here, she always used to make this little camper get in the water, whether or not he wanted to, and stay there until he had hypothermia and at least two limbs. <laughs> I lost a toe. I don't like your mom, Bobby. She just sounds a bit cruel. I will not be rooting for you in this game. (laughs) You insult my mommy, you insult me, you insult all of Camp Pleasant, and I hope you are killed and are the killer somehow. (laughs) I love Bobby. I love Bobby so much. Bobby sells this show. Like, this show really would have lived or died on Mm -hmm. Bobby's charm. Yeah. Uh, Well, I will just say this now. But we both fell in love with Bobby, and we found out that he's a stand-up comedian, and we watched him on Roast Battle, and he is so good at getting made fun of. He's not a great roaster, but man, comics really found some material with this poor man. Well, doesn't he do one with his own wife? He does one with his wife. Oh, it's great. And I, I love, love it Bobby. She, I love Bobby so much. She roasts him and goes, I love you. <laughs> it's really funny. Call? God, do I hope Bobby's in the next season. Like, I'm so afraid they're going to get a new host. Uh, I believe he is on the next season. Thank God. Um, He's so good. He's so good. Because I believe... Also, I hope he gets fired and I can replace him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of where you are right now. Of uh, You really like him, but also you want to stab him and take his I job. I want to take his job. So, but he is... Absolutely fantastic. Yes. Uh, so the idea is they have to swim out to these buoys. Yeah. Which are buoys. They're buoys, but they say boys because British, I guess. Yes. Uh, and they each have a different money amount. And there's a map that you can use to figure out which ones are the most valuable. You then bring them back to the dock, and you have to throw them into this one area to bank the money. If you miss, no money. Bobby's like, are you going to use the map? Use the map, stupid. Yeah. And eventually Sam's like, I will hang out here by the map and direct everyone into where the the good money is. Yes. Uh, I just, I want to let you know, because I know you're worried. Uh, the killer camp ad for casting for season two discusses Bobby specifically and he's in the ad. Okay, good. good. So I was worried. Fear not. So while they're uh, grabbing uh, the boys, they look towards the shore. Hey, hey, grabbing the boys. He's just standing there. Yeah. And they're like, oh, all right, back to gameplay. Yeah. He doesn't do anything. (laughs) He doesn't do anything. Um, you know, Eleanor and Carl get theirs in. Sam does as well. Um, Holly, Rosie, and Rob do not quite. And neither does Jax, but Sean does. Sean is back to well, doing... Well, first off, they have to the swim them back. Yes. And Carl almost doesn't make it because he forgot to unhook his. Yes. So he's just dragging an anchor with him. But yeah. But because he's the fucking Terminator, it barely slows him down. Yeah. It's uh, very funny. Yeah, then they have to throw them into the thingies. Yeah, and most of them don't do very well. No. Uh, I don't actually have the number on this because it was not... It didn't, the numbers do not feel important at this point. No, it's, it's, an, it's not enough to make Bobby happy. No. So Bobby is again upset about all the money that the killer is getting. So then we go to the dweeb tent. And we actually get this duel scene. Rob 
literally does the screen rules. Yes. Well, Holly. he is the film buff. Yeah. So it, it kind of makes sense. Well, but... he's Jamie Kennedy from Scream at yeah. this moment. Um, and Carl is talking to Eleanor and Carl outs Rob as having a crush on Eleanor while Rob is telling Holly he likes Eleanor. Yes. And uh, Eleanor goes, I would rather he die than have that conversation. Yes. Which is such a, like... Eleanor is kind of accidentally a reality show villain. Yes. Eleanor says that she has minus 10 feelings for him. She also, she's talking to Carl and she goes, I'd rather he die than have that conversation. Bruce. (laughs) Yeah. Like she jokingly hails Bruce, which is such a like, such a power move. Yeah. I really like Eleanor at this point. Uh, And Carl's like, you are evil. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Clues competition. Rob admits to liking it. Oh, this is the we find out who is talking crap on whom challenge. Yes. This is a lot. So I I like the camp feel to this is this is they're split up into teams and they're reading a postcard that was supposed to be sent to their parents. Yeah. It It was like, dear mom and dad, I'm having fun at camp. I think Jax talks too much. And then you have to figure out who said that. Yeah, it's who talked this specific smack. Yes. Uh, This is another challenge from the mole. Yeah. This is usually how the mole ends, where they're like, which, you know, usually when they're down to three, they're like, uh, who did this person say has the biggest, the best hair? And then they would choose. But then, like, the last one's always like, if... Greg had a chance to save one of you falling off of a cliff. Who would he let die? Yeah. <laughs> it's all It's a like rough that. game. And it's very funny. So we find out that Sean doesn't quite trust Carl. We find out that Rob really does have a thing for Eleanor, which is when Eleanor screams, minus 10 feelings for Rob. <laughs> And I have this note of, I don't think Eleanor's the killer at this point. She's too funny? Yeah. Well, it's also like, I'm really on the Sean train at this point. Okay. And Eleanor is too comfortable being sus. And yeah. like, the the really dark humor. I relate to Eleanor a lot at this point. Right. Like, I could see myself going, Bruce! <laughs> like, jokingly hailing him. So, Rosie is out and is not trusting Sam. And they say, well, who says Carl and Sean's relationship is fake? And all the men think it's one of the girls. Yeah. It's Rob. It's Rob. Rob, <laughs> Rob does not believe in it. Um, somebody says that Holly isn't as innocent as she comes off. I also want to point out that everyone is in their 20s. Holly's 19, right? Yeah, except yeah. for Holly. So, like, Holly's really the baby of the group. Yes. Uh, it's a little different than American TV because Holly would be drinking age. Right, right. So it's... Because we have this like line at 21 of like drinking versus not drinking. And Holly would seem younger in an American show because she wouldn't be able to drink. Uh, there's also this moment where uh, somebody says something that they don't like. I believe it's Sam. They don't like Sam because he always commandeers the conversation. Mm-hmm. And Sam immediately is like, oh, Jack said that. And Jax did say that, but Jax gets upset that he got called out for it. Despite the fact that, like, everyone... It's like, you, but he was right. It's not like he was wrong. And this is the most we've seen Jax really do at this point. Yeah, so he gets all upset. Uh, Holly says that Sean is loud and takes attention from her. Mm-hmm. And the winners end up being the team of Sam, Holly, Carl, and Rob. Yes. Uh, I, I do not have the clues this time. Do you have clues? Uh, yes. I also like having their uh, their notes here. Yes. Uh, Holly is shocked. Carl swears. And then Rob and Sam have a... Ooh. Ooh. Rob's clue is that the killer hates peas. Yes. And Rosie goes, garden peas are mushy peas because they're British. Yeah. And Timmy's like... And it, Rob goes, it just has peas, Rosie. It just Rosie. has peas. <laughs> Carl's clue is that the killer wants to be an astronaut. And then Rosie, like, goes in a real sexist direction. And goes, oh, so it's male. Yeah. Because only men can be astronauts. And I went, Rosie, you killer. Don't also put your gender back. 
And uh, Sam has people assume the killer is not straight. My next note. Oh, it's Rob. Well, Jax goes, oh, it's me. <laughs> and then everyone laughs because, like, we, we have this thing of Rob canonically is interested in women. Yes, I thought Rob was gay. And I thought Jax was gay. It turns out neither of them are gay. <laughs> Jack, Jax isn't gay? No, I don't think Jax is gay either. Uh, Jax is gay, my dear. Okay, all right. Well, now I, I felt good that I was right then. Yeah. Um, so, because, so Jax goes like, oh, it's me, because he's kind of joking. Yes. At this point, on that clue in particular, I went, oh, I bet it's a girl. Yeah. Because the fact that, like, uh, I, I bet a bunch of people would assume that a girl is bisexual. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I think that clue is pointing to a girl, and I think it's the show trying to shoehorn that it's Rob. Yeah. And I'm refusing to believe that it's Rob. And then Holly drops her clue. The killer can't live without films. And Rob, the film geek, is like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, Because that's Holly's clue, right? Yes. So I start to get sus of Holly, because I was like, I think she's trying to make it be Rob. Because, like, that would be a clue you'd make up. Yeah, because it's so specific. Like, that's, it's like, kind of like, my clue says it's Rob. Yeah. Yeah. My clue says he's currently Mine's wearing... a picture of Rob. <laughs> <laughs> my clue says the killer's name is Rob. Yeah. I am, My clue is a photograph of Rob killing Nuri. <laughs> I don't know. That's just what it's... That's just what it is. We get a shot of Carl and Jax having, like, a really nice conversation about Jax being upset. Oh, it was Carl and Dexter Wright. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, Carl is, at this point, non-toxic masculinity. Like, Carl is very comfortable. Yeah. Like, having a bro moment. Because Jax is like, I'm really upset that you called me out correctly when I said that you were someone that likes to uh, dominate conversations. And Carl... Well, he said Sam likes to... Go- it's more that Carl called Jax out for saying yes. that about Sam. Saying that about Sam. That's where I'm getting confused. And... Uh, Carl goes, the only reason I knew it was you was because it used the word commandeer. And you're the only person that would use the word commandeer. Which I was immediately like, great gameplay. Yes. Re- like, great work there. Uh, and, the, and then he's just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's very like, oh, I figured it out because you're the only one who would use a word. Yeah. So now everyone kind of thinks it's Rob. And then in the confessional... Rob defends himself by saying he's not stable enough to be a psycho killer. Yeah. That he's like, I can't keep all those lies together and straight. Like, right. So that, which is always a great defense. Mm-hmm. Um, they remind us about Fergal, Nuri, and Warren, and they show kind of like an edited version of their deaths, and they have a hard time showing Warren's death. Yes. Get it? Hard time. <laughs> hard time. Because he got killed by a giant dong. Yeah. So we're changing up the way things work now. There is no immunity challenge. Correct. And instead of the killer choosing someone to kill, the campers will vote on who they think the killer is. Yes. And that person will be banished from the camp immediately. Yes. So this is the first time that the campers actually have a chance to identify the killer, which is a very interesting situation that, like, we're three episodes deep and this is the first time they actually get that opportunity. Yeah. To, to make their guess. Uh and you joke, like, watch them nail it and the show ends after three episodes. <laughs> the last two episodes are clip shows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're laughing Because we knew that. there were five. Yeah, we knew there was five episodes. And at this point, I actually started thinking... The last two episodes are actually the summer camp reality yeah, show they signed up for. we're just going to hang out by the pool. Uh, so... <laughs> it's them winning challenges really easily because the killer's not there to sabotage it. Uh, I actually have the thought that I was like, I wonder if this was meant to run longer, but they nail it on the fifth episode. So I'm having all these thoughts. And then it's voting time. Jax chooses Rob because of the clues. Mm -hmm. Carl chooses Rob because Rob is kind of sucked at all the activities. Mm -hmm. Rob chooses Sam because he feels like Sam is fake. Uh, Sean chooses Rob based on the clues. Uh, Sam chooses Rob because he's the other guy people think did it. Yeah. Like, if you're Sam, you're like, yeah, definitely the other guy. Yeah. Um, It'd be really weird if he was like, you know what? Eleanor. (laughs) He's like, no. (laughs) Vote to save yourself. My next note is Rosie chooses Sam 
Because otherwise, Holly and Eleanor's votes don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Holly does choose Rob, and she's in tears and apologizes. Meaning Eleanor's vote does not matter. Yeah. Uh, but she also picked Rob. She also picked Rob, though. And Rob goes, I can reveal that I am the killer. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> Oh my God. <laughs> Me. Are you joking? Are you, Are you joking? joking? You snake. I'm the killer. And I was just like, wait, what? It's oh. like, yeah, you caught me. I'm the killer. I was like, wait, there's gotta be more show. Okay, do you want to hear my notes? This is up there with Whale, Whale, Whale. All right, go for it. Rob the Killer, what the shit? There are two more episodes. Rob takes off the glasses. It's Scream Rules. Oh my God, he is a not hot version of the Scream Killer. But okay, wait, he's kind of hot. <laughs> Uh, that was my meltdown during this. This is where I no- noticed that Rob is wearing the Joseph Seed glasses from Far Cry 5. Like the yellow aviators. Yeah. I was like, of course he's a psychopath. <laughs> and he just kind of leans back. He's like, yeah, I'm the killer. And they show a clip show of him sabotaging it. Well, uh, yeah, uh, the the first one, the, uh, the watermelon one. I was pouring all the watermelon out of the watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> You make it as comedy and over the top as possible, people, it distracts people, no? When we were all tied together, I was just pulling and tightening the knots and not helping anyone at all. There's nothing I can do! I just overthrew it and completely missed. And this will be important, so make a note in your brain. The clue he actually got was not that the killer's favorite food was Thai food. It was that the killer's favorite food was steak. Yeah. So uh, he changed it so that no one would catch him. And also, uh, the peas clue is fake. Yeah. And, uh, did we learn what it was supposed to be? No, but the balcony clue was real. But the balcony clue was real. <laughs> Good for him. So uh, Rob does say that like the friendships he made with Eleanor and Holly were real. Yeah. And Eleanor is just like minus 10 feelings. Yes. Uh, he goes on to explain that... Nuri was useless. Nuri was useless. He killed Nuri for no reason. But he killed Warren because Warren cost him the most money. Because yes. he thought about it that way. Yes. Unlike every other person who's trying to win money. Sorry. So Rob gets taken away by Sheriff Donson. Yes. But... Just some random character who we're just meeting now. Anyway. We still get a scary story. There's a handsome, meaty cop and his prisoner. And the car arrives, and in the middle of the road... The The cop gets out of the car because he hears something. Mm -hmm. And so the cop leaves. The cop actually, like, doesn't... Nothing happens to the cop. Now, at this point, I'm like, oh my god, uh, Bruce is going to save Rob. That's, and that's how we're going to do the rest of the show, is that they're, he's going to be, like, escaped and on the run. This is going to be cool. Yeah. Bruce then drags Rob out the car window and bludgeons him with a hammer. Like Matt Patton escaped the night. Like, it's shot similarly. Yeah. Matt Pat's death in escape the night, where we don't see the gore. Yeah. And then I have, lesson, my dears, don't wear yellow aviators. Yeah. And then uh, Bruce... Hijacks the cop car and he cranks some tunes and he's listening to Spandau Ballet. Yes. Uh, this is a good time to mention the UK edit has a lot of licensed music that the US edit doesn't have because the licensing rights have been more oh, expensive. Yeah. So this was probably supposed to be true, but it's just like generic 80s royalty free music. Yeah. Crazy story, right? So now I'm like, oh, cool. I guess you've won, right? Wrong. There's a wicked second act twist. Rob was not acting alone. Oh, oh God. There has been a second killer amongst you this whole time. Great twist, huh? Polly swears a blue streak. Yeah. And uh, we find out that there are two killers. There are two killers. Uh, so you got to catch the other killer. 
uh, and uh, the clues that you've already gained uh, could apply to either killer. Yeah. So some of them were related to Rob. But some of them are related to someone else. Someone else, and you don't know which is which. So at the end of this episode, I still think it's Sean. Yeah, I still think it's Rosie. And I also now believe Eleanor and Holly are exonerated completely. Yeah, I'm still a little sus Holly, but... Because I think it would be incredibly poor gameplay for the killers to be in the same clique. Yeah, right, right. Which is why I don't think it's Eleanor or Holly. That makes sense. So the other reason we decided that this should be a mainstream episode and not a crowdfund crypt episode was we knew this had a much stronger potential to become a two-parter. Yeah, and this seems like a pretty natural place to end this one. So uh, we're going to call it here. That's going to be the end of part one of Killer Camp. Uh, Having a ball so far. Yeah, and I'm hoping, actually, this will also buy me a little time, Mm -hmm. uh, because I have some DMs in that I'm hoping to get a little more info. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more info and uh, talk to some of these folks. And uh, on top of that, uh, if you have not seen this, like, I know we spoiled the first half for you, but you can still play detective and try to figure out who is the second killer of Killer Camp. All the episodes are available for free on the CW website. Yep. So uh, that's Which is, you know, the other place that you can watch Riverdale. Yes. Uh, so uh, we already know what we're watching next week. We're watching more uh, Killer Camp. Thank you to crowdfund Crypt Keeper Matthew for keeping the lights on and, of course, for suggesting Killer Camp. Where can people find us? You can email us at thestaydoomedshow at gmail.com. Or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And if you want me to host your reality show, I'm at Plus Two Comedy. If you can't believe that it ended up being tropey after all, I'm at Sprocket League. Until next time, here comes the Stay Doomed. Ginger snaps.